Today I'm joined by Nick. Nick Chapman is the president of uh, what was formerly known as BKFC Thailand, and he has recently changed the name to BKFC Asia. This is going to be a really interesting move for you guys over there. So I wanted to start by asking what caused this name change, and uh, is it going to take a while to get all the graphics changed for this? <laughs> Uh, we get asked that question a lot, actually. Um, the funny thing is, everyone's saying, "So, what caused it? What made it happen?" It was always on on the cards. It was a, an expansion plan that we set in the business model from day one. So, it's not something. <clears throat> excuse me. It's not something we hadn't um, had in mind. It has been brought forward a little bit sooner than we we uh, anticipated, but that's because of success. So, um, yeah, generally, it's a good thing. So, you know, we started Thailand, test the market here. Um, with a view to moving out, Cambodia is next, and we're looking at other regions as well. Thailand's only been Asia. around for about a uh, little less than one year, like maybe eleven months, right? So yeah, it's a lot exactly. Of already expanding out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had a lot of success here. It, it grew very fast, and we we got a lot of traction. So yes. So, uh, what was the process like of uh, getting Cambodia to come in over the fold? Is it? Is it difficult to get other nations that aren't, um, you know, that that aren't Thailand? Like Thailand has this massive global reputation for being a country where fights come from, and Cambodia does also have that history. But um, it's probably not as as globally known as a, a big fight country. Uh, what got Cambodia to say, "Yeah, we, we'll take this organization over here"? See, that's actually a really good question. I don't think anyone's asked me that yet. Um, because people go, oh, Cambodia, that's a strange place to go. Well, not when you look at the history of Cambodia. I mean, these guys have been fighting uh, Kung Kumar. It's like uh, their version of Muay Thai. I've heard that there's centuries. actually a little bit I mean, of controversy within <laughs> people, the historians of Cambodia. They say they invented this fighting style, and people of Thailand say that they invented this fighting style. There's always rivalry. Uh, and politics inside martial arts, which I'm sure you're probably aware. I mean, you can have a gym at this end of the state and one at the other, and they're always arguing and saying they did this or they did that. Yeah, I mean, look, it's the same with the UK and Scotland. There's always rivalry. But the, the point is, each of these regions in Southeast Asia especially have an incredible history of martial arts. You've got Myanmar, the left way. Left way with headbutts and, and been fighting bare knuckles since time began. You've got these guys in Cambodia. Now, they've been fighting their style of, of striking for, for, for many, many, many years, many generations. And it's very effective, very powerful, very, very game and hungry fighters over there. Um, and what we want to do is actually venture into these parts of the world and show the world, like, this isn't just about Muay Thai. No, there's people over here that are doing their version of, of striking, kickboxing, and whatever you want to call it, that's just as effective and they're just as capable. Yeah. I, and I've heard that uh, much like Thailand, a lot of them start real young. Like I've uh, heard that uh, even some of the professionals, they'll fight for as little as something like $75 a fight. Dude, they're fighting every weekend, sometimes two times a week. And they're doing it from the ages of five years old and up. You know, it's it's funny because, okay, the Western world, you, you get a lot more popularity. There's a lot more money in America and Europe that promotes these fights. You've got all these guys boxing and kickboxing and and they think they're the best. They think they're the greatest and that they're, they're the toughest guys on the planet. Well, I'm here to tell you that that is not the case. Like, we've got guys here that you don't hear about because their country doesn't support and boost the sports as much as the Western world. I'm about to show you some real tough people. I mean, like, these guys are born tough. They, they go through rigorous training and, and they go through a lifestyle that the Western world can't even comprehend. And you think you're tough? I mean, I thought I was tough. If I come to Southeast Asia and see the way these guys live and <laughs> I'm telling you there's a whole new level of toughness over here. Yeah, well, that actually leads into another question I have. Um, can you give the English speaking world that might not be familiar with some of the big Cambodian fighters right now, uh, the ones that are coming into your organization, can you give us a preview of any specific people or names? Okay, well, I'm actually going through a list of fighters at the moment from Cambodia. Um, I haven't signed any yet, so I'm not going to give you any names. But what I can tell okay. you is these are the most highly decorated Kung Kumar fighters. Now, Kung Kumar is the version of, of kickboxing striking over in... in um, I'm not going to say it's Muay Thai because it's not. It's, it's, it's not even fair to compare it. They're, they're, different. They're, they're kind of similar, but this is Kung Kumar. This is their style. Muay Thai is the Thai version. Left way is the Myanmar version. Okay, they're all their own identity. 
Uh, but I can tell you now, we've got the most decorated um, fighters in the federations over there. Because what's great about Cambodia is the federations have really got behind this. They've gone, listen, this is ben this is going to benefit our fighters. Then we want to see it happen. And, you know, it's, it's a little bit different in Thailand. They're kind of protecting Muay Thai. And they're a little bit worried about anyone getting too much traction in a different type of sport. And it's a bit frustrating, really, because we're bringing foreign investment. We're trying to bring opportunities to fighters here. And we are getting a little bit of pressure from from the authorities but over in Cambodia like come over you know the, the Myanmar yeah. are the same they're like come over so anyway answer your question I, I think that's going to actually bring a lot of um, uh, potential economic prosperity to their country too if this takes off uh, absolutely yeah uh, this could be a, a global thing uh, yeah people from the bare knuckle world over in America the, as well as England they're they're very fixated yeah. on the BKFC brand as a whole and you guys are an offshoot of that so people's yeah. eyes are going over to uh, BKFC Asia now. Well, we are actually BKFC. I mean, not so much an offshoot. We are. Our part do is governed by him. He oversees us and we, we bounce ideas back and forth and he supports us 100%. So a lot of our fighters are now going to start transitioning over when they prove themselves. We've got some of the, you know, the, the mainstream world probably hasn't seen. They're about to see these guys. We've got some guys from Myanmar coming over from world left way champions. Um, we got we just signed a massive signing from the Philippines as well. Former UFC, former Brave. Um, we got some some seriously tough guys coming onto this card. I heard rumor, and I don't know if you're allowed to talk about this. If you're not allowed to talk about this, it's fine. We won't. But I heard rumor that you guys might be looking to take some of the American guys, such as Dat Win, and bring him over to BKFC Asia to try his his uh, his style up against some of the uh, other Asians. Of course, like we're always looking to mix it up. You know, guys that are starting to really sort of show some some talent here now, and um, it's picked up the attention of David Feldman. And now we're talking on calls, going, "How do you see this fight going? How do you see that fight going?" And we're like, "Just, just make it happen, then. <laughs> Let's do it." Uh, I mean, that's obviously an interesting prospect for us. We haven't confirmed anything. We have had brief talks, but we we like him because he's from Vietnam, and we're right yeah. on the doorstep of Vietnam here. So. Maybe you might see that happen one day. You are going to see a, a very well-known American name come over very soon to fight Sanchai in December. Haven't announced it yet, but it is definitely going to happen. Um, so that's something to look forward to. That is something to look forward to. Oh, with BKFC Asia, I wanted to ask, are you planning on making new weight classes? Because some of the Asians in boxing traditionally have really dominated these lower weight classes. Um, over in America, I've heard talk of lower eight, uh, weight classes not really being so much of an interest over here. But over there, I think it would really suit some of these people. Yeah, I mean, obviously, look, we, we've got um, an entire continent of people that are generally a lot smaller than the Europeans and the Americans. So, uh, yeah, we, we're obviously not going to be very strong in, in the, the higher weight categories, but the lower weight categories, yes. But we won't be changing any of the weight categories, no. We've got guys that fit in 70, 66, 62, um, 57, 52, and we've got guys that even go below that. So, yeah. you know, if there's, a, if there's a demand for it and these guys are capable, then, you know, we'll put them in the correct categories i think we've just added um a lower weight division in in america the 52 kg because mm -hmm. our girl fanny palumpi just won our title at 52 so i think david started that division now and we actually was going to send our champion over there and she had some issues at the airport with a bloody covid vaccination thing so frustrating but you can expect to see our guys crossing over the pond and, and especially the smaller guys as well okay okay and uh as far as the women go are is there a chance for a 45 kilogram division uh, i think it's going to be 48 48 okay yeah but again you know it depends we need to see some real talent coming through at that that weight for us to start a new weight category uh so at this time we're not looking to start that weight category but it could happen as far as other countries that you're wanting to move in you you mentioned myanmar several times for the history of uh left way uh, is, is that the next yeah. one on the radar or is there another one that you're going to target hard first and be like, hey, let us in here. This is all the benefits we can bring to your country and this is what our organization can do for you. Uh, yeah. is, is there are you focused on a specific country next after Cambodia? Absolutely. We're just about to sign a massive contract with a with a huge corporation in a specific company uh, country. I can't tell you who. That's David Feldman's job. He he does the announcements first. But what I can tell you is this. Okay, we're now in Cambodia. Uh, we have had a lot of interest from Vietnam. We've had a lot of interest from Myanmar. We've had a lot of interest from the Philippines. We've had a lot of interest from India. Um, 
And these regions, 100% we're going to explore. They're not signed, sealed and delivered yet. Um, as I say, they're not official until David announces them. So we we, uh, we we strike the deal. David does the announcements and then we we go live with it as well. Uh, but I can tell you we are in, in advanced discussions now just about the sign of contract, a very lucrative contract, which will be taking place here in Asia. Since we're in the uh, Southeast Asia region here, as you probably know, there's a traditional martial art up in neighboring Laos which is right above wow. Cambodia, uh, which is a little bit similar to uh, uh, Muay Thai. They call it Muay Lao. Are there any Muay Thai fighters that have been uh, contacting your organization, wanting to come down and, and do some fights with you guys? Absolutely, yes. I mean, Lao is on our doorstep. We've got very strong connections in Lao. Uh, they've actually contacted me and said, what would it take to bring BKFC to Lao? So we oh, are- Oh, they asked you. That's awesome. Yeah, well, they all do. Yeah, they'll reach out to us. Yeah, they're, they're coming to us now. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. We've got, on this side of the planet, we've got a lot more people than you've got on your side of the planet. So you know how quickly it exploded and how popular it is in the Western world? Well, take that and probably 2x it. I think you're going to see this this side of the planet probably a lot bigger with BKFC, not, not, too, not too far in the future. Here in Thailand, gambling is illegal anyway. Um, we're absolutely not allowed to endorse or have any involvement with gambling whatsoever. That's a oh, criminal okay. offense. Yeah. Are there so are there um, are some of the other um uh things that have sponsored BKFC in America in the past not allowed over there? Absolutely. We the funniest thing about Thailand is it's it's one of the most liberal countries in the world, and everyone gets a misconception because of how liberal it is. Everything's illegal. Everything. I mean, they just legalized cannabis, so people are smoking weed. But well, I had heard that just rest. a few years ago you can get the death penalty for cannabis, right? Mm -hmm. You absolutely can. Yeah, they're actually they're actually releasing people from prison now because they've legalized it. But you will go to prison for smoking a vape. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, and and honestly, every, everything's illegal. Um, it's a really funny country with the laws, but I, I love it. It's a great system. But so we're not allowed um, alcohol. We're not allowed any smoking memorabilia. Uh, sorry, smoking device or anything like anything that relates to smoking. We're not allowed any. But we're not allowed any banks that are not commercially operating in Thailand. So basically, the whole system here is set up to protect Thai culture, Thai economy, which I absolutely agree with. But it makes yeah. life very difficult for us to really expand this sport here. We're just not allowed any sponsors at all. We gambling absolutely no way. However, here's the great news: if I move two hours over the border into Cambodia. It's open season. I can do what the hell I want. So <laughs> that's exactly why we're moving into BKFC Asia now, expanding out because we actually do have some some potential gambling sponsors coming on some big online casinos, and then of course everything's going to have to run at the right time. There will be no time delays. All right. Well, thanks for sharing the information you have, and uh, I'll be sure to pass this on to some other people. No problem. <laughs> All right.